Hi, this is Ian X04, here to show you guys a design for an early game iron farm for Survival Minecraft 1.16 Java. Now when I say that this farm is for early game, I mean really early game. It isn't all that hard to get this iron farm working within one Minecraft day of finding a village. This means that if you happen to spawn next to a village, you could have an iron farm built and working before you fall asleep the very first night in your new world. This farm gives you a perfectly respectable 175 ingots per hour by suffocating the golem. When you find lava, the farm can be upgraded easily to double its drop rate to about 345 ingots per hour. And if you want to improve this rate further, your time is probably best spent making additional farms since this is just so easy to build. I typically have four of these farms at my base when playing survival. If you want to know the details of iron farm mechanics, this has been covered really well by others, so I don't need to duplicate their efforts. Please follow the links in the description if you want to learn more from them. In this video, I'll mention the special mechanics that apply to this design. One of the key features is the zombie in a boat. It turns out that putting a mob in a boat prevents that mob from despawning, and as a result, any zombie will do. You don't need to worry about whether it's picked up an item, or armor, or weapon, and there's no need for name tags either. The disadvantage to a boat is that it prevents the zombie from moving, and normally the zombie needs to move around so that its line of sight to each villager is broken once in a while. The trapdoor and slabs that separate the villagers from the zombie are set up so that the villagers can see the zombie from all locations, except at the pillow of the middle bed. From this position, the villager doesn't see the zombie, so it can fall asleep in any of the three beds, but it gets a clear line of sight to the zombie again once it lies down. This break in line of sight for just a moment gives the villager a chance to sleep, which is all it needs to keep summoning golems. When a golem is summoned, only the spaces in this pit are deep enough to count as valid spawning places because the villagers are seven blocks below the surface and can spawn iron golems only up to six blocks away vertically from the villager. The game doesn't check for collisions with adjacent blocks when spawning an iron golem, and the golems are so wide that their heads can spawn into a space where they suffocate. This is slower than using lava. It takes 50 seconds to suffocate a golem versus 12 and a half seconds to burn it. But you can easily upgrade the farm when you find lava, and this will double your drop rate. You may have noticed that there's no hopper in the starter farm either. It turns out that you don't have to have one because of the way that the game handles groups of the same item. Items normally despawn on their own after five minutes, but there's an exception to this. You've probably noticed that clusters of the same item will combine into a single entity if they're close enough to one another, and this resets the despawn timer to five minutes again. So every time a golem dies, more ingots are added, and the timer is reset each time to add another five minutes, and this continues until there are 64 ingots in the group, after which a new group of ingots is started. That first group of 64 ingots will still take another 5 minutes before despawning, and so with the rate that the farm suffocates golems, it will take on average about 26 minutes before a group of ingots disappears. And as long as you stop by that farm more often than that, you won't lose anything. That said, a hopper only takes 5 ingots to make, so it's not hard to upgrade the farm to guarantee that there will be no losses. Okay, on to building this thing. Start by finding a village by some flat terrain. A relatively easy way to find a village is to go to the ocean and then ride a boat following the coast until you see one. Don't bother traveling down the rivers, just follow the ocean coast. Once you're in the village, take six beds from the houses. You'll need three of these beds for the farm itself and three more to lure the villagers to the farm. To start your build, find a flat section of ground at least eight blocks away from any lower ground or caves or ravines. You can listen for mob noises during the day to detect any hidden caves. In addition to the beds, you'll need three trapdoors, two slabs, a ladder, a boat, and at least six torches to prevent spawning on certain blocks. You'll also need a bucket of water so that drops are swept to a central place. If you don't have enough iron to make a bucket yet, don't worry. The first iron golem that is made in the farm will drop enough for you to craft one. Start by digging a trench three blocks long and seven blocks deep. Expand the bottom of the trench into a 3x3x3 room. Add a trap door and two slabs to create a partition between the villagers and zombie, and add the beds so that the pillows are right up against the partition. Continue building a space for the boat and zombie. This space has a 2x3 footprint. It's two blocks tall on the sides aligned with the slabs, and three blocks tall in the middle. 
look straight down in the middle of this two by three space, jump up and leave a boat so that it is sideways. Next, build a set of steps leading back to the surface. It's important that the base of the stairs has at least one block that is even with the floor of the chamber. Spawn proof the stairs with torches so that golems and mobs don't show up here. Replace the block for the last step of the stairs and add trap doors. Go back to the original trench that you made and place three beds over the trench so that the pillows are over the empty spaces in the ground. Now, dig a 9x5 spawning platform that runs alongside the village and zombie chamber that you just made underground. Start by going around the perimeter, and then add eight blocks on the island in the middle with a one-block gap between each of them. Finish digging out the platform so that it's two blocks deep. Place a torch down to spawn-proof the collection spot for the drops, and a ladder in the corner to get out. Use a hoe to turn the dirt along one side into farmland. This prevents the iron golem from spawning in these spaces, which would mess up the farm. Add water to the opposite corners of the platform, and be sure to double-check later on that the farmland is hydrated. At dusk, villagers will start to sleep in the beds that you set at the surface. Knock the beds out from under them so that they fall into the farm. Cover up the hole when you're done to prevent anything else from going in. At night, lure a zombie to the trap doors. When he falls in, close the trap door that is on the top of the steps first, then he'll go down into the steps and into the boat automatically. If everything is done right, your farm should start in a moment. Now that you've completed the basic starter farm, let's talk about upgrading it. Pretty quickly, you should have enough iron to set up a hopper and a chest. And when you build a set of steps down to access the chest, place down a torch next to it so that you can spawn-proof that spot from the golems. Later in the game, when you find lava, you can use a gate and three signs to suspend the lava over the hopper. Open the gate so that the golem can pass through it, and now place down a fourth sign. This one goes on top of the gate. This sign fireproofs the gate so that it doesn't burn from the lava. Now remove the suffocation blocks to finish this important upgrade. There is a good chance that iron golems may show up from the nearby village. These golems will interfere with your iron farm, so you need to keep them at least 16 blocks away from the villagers inside your farm. You can do this by using a lead on a golem or setting up a fence to surround your farm. If you add additional iron farms, Keep them far enough away from each other so that the iron golems in one farm don't interfere with the spawning at another. At the start of this video, I mentioned that this iron farm can be up and running by the first Minecraft night, and that's not an exaggeration. I hope you enjoy this demonstration on a random seed that I've never played before. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh. Oh. Ah. Huh.
Ah.